Good morning, church. It's Saturday morning. Take your Bibles back to the book of uh, Psalm and also to Psalm 51, where David is expressing his remorse, his regret, his repentance over the sin that he got involved in. We talked about what that sin was yesterday and what it's done in his life. And let me continue uh, with an outline that Adrian Rogers wrote uh, concerning what sin does. Now, we've already looked at yesterday's that sin soils the soul, saturates the mind, stings the conscience, and it saddens the heart. But also, it has a physical effect on us as well, for it sickens the body. In verse number 8, it says, Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which you have broken may rejoice. Now, the bone that he's talking about here is the, the deep part of us. He hurt all the way down deep into his bones. You can look at other verses in the book of Psalms, chapter 32, verses 3 through 5, and he talks about that he even felt sick on the inside. It is the idea of what we call today a psychosomatic illness. Psych has to do with the mind. That's the word for the mind. Soma is the word for the body. Psycho, mind. Soma, body. Mind over body. When your mind is saturated and you're sad and you're, and you're always deeply convicted and you're going through these things, your body begins to display some physical uh, trauma and, and problems. And they're very real. And so David uh, just hurt deep down inside him. The Bible says, He that sows to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. And so uh, you're not going to be able to sin and get by with it. If you allow that sin to permeate your life for very long, you're even going to be sick uh, in that. Uh, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth up the bones, the Scripture says. And so it sickens the body, but also it sours the spirit. It sours the spirit. In verse number 10, David cries out, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. There was something wrong in the spiritual realm because, you see, that's how we're connected with God, God's spirit living in us. And when we grieve the Holy Spirit, by saying yes to sin, or we quench the Holy Spirit by saying no to the work God has assigned to us. When we have or are at odds with God's Spirit, then the Spirit within us, uh, our own spirit, begins to sour. Uh, we, we, we begin to be judgmental. Uh, you remember the story of how David was uh, in sin. Nathan, the prophet, came to David, and Nathan knew about the sin, David had never confessed it. And Nathan goes through a whole story about how there was a man who had many, many sheep and he had a friend come one night and he had a neighbor that had only one little ewe lamb and they treated it like a kid almost. It was a nice little pet and even stayed in the house with him sometimes. And He said, instead of taking one of his ewe lambs of which he had many of and slaughtering it and feeding it to his guest, he went over to this man who had only one little ewe lamb took his lamb, killed his lamb, fed it to his guest. And David was livid. David said, that man ought to die. That, that's something worthy of death. But that's not what the law requires. This man is going to pay fourfold. And that's what the law required. He's going to have to give this other man four of his lambs. And then Nathan points at David and said, you're that man. You have many wives. Uriah only had one and you went and stole his wife. You see how we can be overly judgmental, how we can be sour in our spirit. We, we can be so critical of other people, and oftentimes it is because we in our own heart have a sour spirit. Then not only does it uh, sicken the body and sour the spirit, it seals the lips. In verse number 14 and 15 it says, Deliver me from the guilt of my blood, of bloodshed, O God, the God of my salvation. And my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth your praise. What I notice when someone is in sin and they don't repent, and they allow that sin to smolder inside and begins to burn on the inside, they begin not feeling well, they're sad, there are a lot of things going on, they can't get it out of their mind. And what usually happens is they stop going to church. Why? Because they feel like a hypocrite. 
Or if they're made to go to church because mom and dad made them or they don't want to be disappointed to somebody, other others, or they're just expected to be there. When they're there, they don't sing. They don't testify. Why? Because they feel like a hypocrite. They just kind of sit there and, and they, they don't use their tongue to glorify God. They don't testify. They don't go out and witness to others. Why? Because they feel like a hypocrite. And so those are things that the that sin does. If you're a Christian and you're involved in sin, it soils the soul, saturates the mind, stings the conscience, saddens the heart, sickens the body, sours the spirit, and it seals the lips. And, and we need to repent of it. So how do I get out of sin? What did David do? Number one, he acknowledged that he did sin, that it was his sin. He, he acknowledged that I have done wrong and then he turned away from that sin in repentance, saying, I'm not going to ever do that again. And far as we know, David never sinned like that again. And he turned away from his sin and he sought forgiveness from the Lord. And there were consequences, natural consequences that came about because of David's sin. And so that sin would continue to pay dividends for a while. But God forgave him. David was restored and he continued back in that relationship with God. If that's what needs to be done in your life, get it done. Don't wait. Don't let it sit there and smolder for long periods of time or there will be more severe consequences. Even there is a sin unto death. Let it go. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that uh, you have given us a way out of our sin, that you do not impute our sin. You don't put it uh, on our hearts and on our minds. But Father, you take it away through your son, Jesus who died for our sins and rose again. It's in his holy name that we pray. Amen.